Hey, welcome to the Keystone Experience. Rob Wark and Matt Pitzer. Brought to you by Creek Archery. Find your passion and hunt it down. And Hillview Motors, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Remember, Hillview has it in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What's going on, everybody? We got Justin and Tyler with us. They shoot some little guns. Little baby guns. Little yeah. baby guns. Guns that don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of weird colored. One looks like Easter egg. <laughs> At least the other one's a typical gun. It's black. Probably don't work. <laughs> no, definitely don't. <laughs> Black guns matter. <laughs> All right, so I'm looking at. Now we actually had you on last year, Justin. It was about this time, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, maybe a little later. <laughs> but you know, we started down this rabbit hole, yeah. and uh, a lot changed in that year. So uh, if you want ooh. to listen to a little bit of the last one, we also talked fishing on that one. Yes, that was. Episode one of season three. You can find that on the keystoneexperience.com. Yeah. Yep. Because we had Chef Alex mm-hmm. with us. But let's get into this shooting. Let's, we're dedicating the whole episode. Oh, wow. wow. Yep. All right. You give me where you want to start with this. Well, I guess, Tyler, Justin, let's start with how both of you got into this. I think oh, that's man. a good place to start, yeah. don't you? Yeah, we could do that. Yep. Um. I was, with work, I was seasonally, you know, in the winter it gets slow, so I was sitting at home watching YouTube and checking out gun reviews and all that stuff, and this NRL 22 shooting sports pops up on, you know, the algorithm that YouTube does for you, and I start watching it. I'm like, well, this looks like it could be a lot of fun. So I go down a rabbit hole. I start searching left and right, everything I can find, and I start with a Ruger Precision Rimfire Rifle. 450 bucks, something like that at Dick's. Put a cheap scope on it and start practicing. I'm like, okay, there's something to this. I can enjoy this. And I think I shot one match before I started talking to you, right? Mm, no, you already had the Bagara. I did have the Bagara. Okay. Yeah. So we have a local club over in Centerboro, Pennsylvania, right by Brownsville. And he holds an NRL 22 match every month, last or fourth Sunday of the week or month. We change it around every once in a while, but usually a little. For Sunday, Sunday of the month. So I got kind of tired of the RPR, and then I went to a Bagara B14R, which is a step up. It's about a thousand dollar gun. It's also a seven hundred platform, yeah, 700 which is plat- a big thing. Yeah, we'll probably get into it later. And I went down the rabbit hole deep. New chassis, scopes. I mean, everything. You start diving money into this, and it's like, here we go. It's so a really it, expensive squirrel gun. Yeah, but I can shoot a squirrel three hundred yards. So or should can I? I? Or should I say Tyler shoots groundhogs at like 350? Oh, there was that squirrel at 160. (laughs) Um, So I go down this, and a mutual friend of ours actually introduced us. And he comes out with a savage, you know, your Woodstock, your average squirrel gun, and shoots a match. And from there, it was. Yeah, it was a two to seven scope, no dialing, no anything else. It was what you would find in the squirrel woods. Yep. And uh, did pretty bad. And then me and him actually became buddies. Yeah, so, so we've only known each other for like a year, year, year and a half now. Okay. Which and is about the same amount of time we have shooting in this sport. Yeah. And then it goes to, you know, full custom guns. I sold my Magara, bought a full custom gun, put it all together, and now I own two of them. <laughs> now, you said, is NRL the... The it's, league? Yes, it's National Rifle League 22 series. So they have okay. they have National Rifle League for centerfire guns. You know, your six creeds, six BRs, six BRAs, all of that deal. And that's, you know, out to 1,000 plus yards and all that. But they just adopted this so that clubs could do it at your normal range under 100 yards or 100 yards and under. So, you know, it start, that's where I started. And then there's another league called PRS 22, which goes out to – 500 four, 400 yeah. to and if it's actually a really good match it's usually just 300 because yeah. 22s past 300 in the wind you're getting lucky most of the time okay. i mean you can definitely get say, dialed yeah. in yeah and hit things but it's bigger plates bigger targets kind of some luck so there's you know those are the two main if you want to call them 
memberships or clubs that we shoot? Leagues. leagues. I would yeah, say that's leagues. Good. That's good. Uh, PRS is nationwide. Nationwide. It's there's more matches. Um, like Justin was saying, NRL 22, they have a monthly course of fire, which is usually five stages. You have a couple of different options you can shoot it at. And you always get, you always get a different group of people shooting NRL. It's mostly out, out to just 100. They have the second option, which is out further. But then PRS is always a different course of fire. There's, I mean, some months we shoot seven matches a month. Yep. And that's all weekends. Some some of our weekends are completely booked up. And uh, then NRL also has these NRL X matches. There's only, I think, like 30 or 40 of them a year. And they're a big qualifying match to go to the championships. When's the championships? June this year. Uh, July. July. Yeah, a week after the 4th. Yep. All right, so we heard a little bit about how Justin got into it via YouTube. Yeah, literally, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Tyler, it, was it the same story, or how did you get involved or started? In uh, before I got started in NRL 22, I was actually kind of gearing my way towards just regular PRS matches, center fire, but then COVID hit, and the price of ammo and everything else went through the roof. So... Once I met him, 22 was like, oh, hey, I'll get started here. I'll just get a base and work up to everything else. But the amount I shoot and the cost of everything else, and don't get me wrong, this is still expensive. But uh, it's a lot more affordable for pretty much anyone to actually do. Yeah, and you don't need these full customs. Anybody watching this on YouTube or whatever, you don't need full custom guns to come out and compete. We shoot with a lot of guys that shoot factory guns. That And NRL's $1,500 gun and scope and prs is 12 prs is 12 we might have that backwards it's, it's probably backwards but um you know you can go buy a cz mtr gun for like 600 700 bucks and put a decent scope on it and be right there with what we're shooting you can beat people with fully custom guns all day every day uh-huh. well i mean as it goes with shooting it you can have the best stuff but eventually it does come down to the shooter yep. mm-hmm. the shooter the practice how meticulous you are with everything else. Yeah. What? So how did you guys go about what's a practice look like? Like, how do you guys prepare for these shoots? They go to Planet, Planet Fitness. Oh, yeah. Pick yeah. these damn things up. Yeah, <laughs> pick them up. <laughs> Got to be strong. You know what? I actually do want to touch on that for half a second because you think 22. Mm-hmm. Everybody immediately goes to, okay, that was my first rifle. That's the rifle you get your kids. You know, it's what you start out yep. with, this lightweight, recoilless mm-hmm. gun. This might not recoil, but these two... Well, it can't because it weighs 132 <laughs> pounds. Well, they both have... One, two straight, one, 23 two. and a half, 24-inch barrels. Um, but what you're kind of getting at with the weight, the weight for the props we shoot off of and everything else, you put the gun down on it, it'll sit there, and you're actually just using the weight to help stabilize everything else. More or less. Yeah, I mean, that's all it is. And it's all about getting your your gun to balance for your style of shooting. So some people will have, you know, their gun weighted differently. But I try to free recoil, so that means, like, my shoulder is almost not on the gun. It is, but it's not, like, pushing into it because you're not anticip- anticipating any recoil. So when you pull the trigger, the gun doesn't move. You watch around. And with these scopes, you can watch your round go down range and either hit or miss your target. And that's a huge deal in this game, mm-hmm. be able to, especially shooting wind. Watch that round. Hey, it went off left edge. I need to hold a little more right. Or I need two more, two, three more tenths right, whatever it is. So that's the that's why the guns weigh as much as they do. And there we have a couple of buddies that shoot really lightweight guns and do well. You uh, don't. You, they, they also started heavying their guns up did, a little bit. They did. But they, you, don't, you don't need a 23-pound gun. Yeah, so that – the. the we kind of got a little sidetracked, but the moral of the story is this is not the the little five pound no. or less rifle. No, nope, this isn't your little two hundred dollar ten twenty two. Yeah, yeah. And, and let's briefly touch on, it, and then I think Rob maybe we'll get into a little bit more of the preparation and stuff. But you mentioned being able to see your round. Yep. Is that because of the scope you guys shoot, and how did you guys decide on the scopes that you're shooting? So. I went down the rabbit hole, and I went through a bunch. You of go scopes. down a lot of rabbit holes. When it's something that I enjoy, it's over. It's the same thing yeah. as fishing. He's the rabbit hole king. Yeah. Basically. It's just, and I and I spend a lot of time, you know, on 
YouTube, on channels, on forums, reading, learning, and you know, trying to figure out why and why I should own something or why I should do this instead of that. Um, and I've shot a lot of the top name scopes. Well, this November's mm, it, November to f- December ish. Yeah. I was on Facebook and I was actually getting my oil changed, and I saw on Facebook for Apex Optics. Uh, it was you know so you send in a resume basically to be a sponsored shooter. I text Tyler said, "Dude, let's do this. You should do, you should totally do this." Well, lo and behold, you know we live nine minutes apart from each other. We both got picked up by Apex Optics. We're both sponsored shooters by them, and the glass is amazing. I mean, everything about it is is a top quality scope. Um, and they're reasonably priced at two grand for arrival. Right about yeah, two grand for arrival. American, they might yeah. say Canadian because they're from Canada, but yeah. So the optics plays a huge part in it, being able to dial your turrets, having good parallax, and positive, positive clicks on all your turrets. So, like, I mean, you might even be able to hear them. That's just your elevation turret. Oh, uh, you're going to miss your next target now because you did that. No, oh, absolutely not. Thing. Everything is repeatable with yeah, these scopes. It'll come right back to zero every time. Like, you can turn it, it'll stop. Dead. You can't turn any lower. Uh-huh. So they have built-in zero stops, and these actually give you five tenths below. Which four, we, four tenths, I believe. Four, yeah. We shoot mill, mill scopes at MOA. Everybody knows MOA, right? Yeah, absolutely. So MOA is, is a finer adjustment for sure. Your bench rest guys, they always, most of them use MOA because it is much finer uh, minute angle. What is it? Is it three MOA to, or three, three not mil, tenths, three but mils it's, to, it's, it's 0. .3 to 1, correct? Yeah, something like that. Um, but this is quicker, so like, you know, we're shooting, call it 200 yards, we're at like 7 mils of elevation. They're probably at like 35. So instead of going to 7, they have to spin this thing around two or three times to mm-hmm. get to their elevation. So in time, you know, when you're on a time stage at 105 seconds, you don't think about that one second, but do it three or four times. Well, there goes five seconds, four seconds. It's a big deal. Yeah. And a lot of people that were shooting MOA scopes are now shooting mill scopes. Yeah. Like I actually started with an MOA scope because growing up hunting, that's really all I knew. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm going to buy an MOA scope in this and I'm going to roll with this and go with this. It took me a little while to switch over in the beginning, but eventually I switched over to Mills, and it's been nothing but an upgrade. We have a few local guys who are trying to coax toward the mill scopes just because of the speed. Because, uh, like Justin's saying, generally you have two minutes on a stage. This last weekend we actually shot one nearly at 90 seconds, and that's sometimes 10 different positions, and everything's about speed and how fast you can get steady and accurate. Yep. So the scopes help. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, scope's a big part of the game. Especially, I mean, you're trying to watch a, 20, a little tiny 22 round go down through the air and either miss or hit. And really, you're looking more at the vapor trail, everything else. Yeah. You're looking at, you're just trying to catch up some kind of trace to see where you're hitting. Rob, are these legal for us to use in squirrel season? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't they be? Yeah, Nothing against our game commission, but anything fun looking is normally not allowed. <laughs> it's just because Pennsylvania sucks. Yeah, we can use these. I mean, if you want to carry this thing through the woods, you can more than well. You're more I, than welcome. But to take here's it. the thing: you're telling me I can shoot 300 yards. I don't need to carry it that damn far. I guess you got a point. You can sit in a tree stand and shoot. It, and looking at these scopes, oh, you'll see the squirrel. It could be a road hunter's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Looking at the apex scopes. I don't think I have to carry this very far. No, no, no. A good tripod in case of beer, man. You could rack up. Some now, do they make hunting scopes? Yes. Yeah. So if I know. might have to uh, look into one for my inline, since I shot deer this year at three hundred and fifty yards. So I actually just thought, was talking to the owner Vanya uh, on the phone, driving home from work, and uh, they have a hunter scope. It's a three to fifteen, I believe thirty four mil tube, might be a thirty mil. Um, but it has the same kind of glass in it and everything else. Uh, it's a good bit lighter. Uh, they have an illuminate reticle and a non-illuminate reticle, which saves some weight. And those are going to be shipping in about June because they're right in production right now. They just released them at SHOT Show this year. And they're like, 
So this is a competition 30, scope. 30 mil tube. 30 mil tube. See, I was That's half right. Standard. That's yes. Dirt, yep. Hunting. You know, Justin, I was going to be really impressed that you knew that until I could kind of peek through here and saw that you were on your phone. Well, you know, they're new products, and it it's not something that tailors to me, but I do want to pick one up and play with one. Well, well we're going to talk to this fella and tell him to send me one to put on my <laughs> flintlock. <laughs> You know, if you sh- I think he's he's probably willing. If you shoot a deer at three hundred plus yards with a flintlock, and I'll give him the video. Might. <laughs> okay, so Tyler's probably not going to know what we're talking about, but you will. Mm-hmm. Killing stand, clear across the other side. No. Yep. There's something wrong with you. Dropped it deader than a doornail. Hey, when you're good, you're good. Uh. I think you just need to put all modern weaponry away and just go back to the mountain man lifestyle. <laughs> Recurve and from the loaders. killing stand, clear across the power line. No. To the edge of the woods. <laughs> Lights out. I think I sat in it last year and I ranged it. It was like three thirty or something like that. Lights <laughs> out. Did just, you dome shot it or did you actually shoot it? I put it right on the back of its head and <laughs> I couldn't tell you where he shot it because I was too busy dragging your old man's deers. <laughs> well, you know, you get that. I push him a nice buck and a doe. He shoots them both, and somehow I had to drag it out of the woods for him. <laughs> You're a young spry man. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what he told me. Apple doesn't fall or fall from the tree. I button. was just going to say that. <laughs> he said, You're younger than me. Go in there and get them. Okay. Well, that's where you should have been like, No, old man, go get it. <laughs> You're just like he didn't call you. You and your cardio uh, regime. What cardio regime? That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> All right, we're getting off topic, but it's usual. Yeah, that, I mean that happens. I mean, looking at these scopes, and when we're done here, I'm just going to look through them because yeah. we got set up beforehand. They look quality. And you they're know, coming out with hunting version. They are, they're coming competition. out competition. Yep, they have a uh, LVPO. Which is a one to ten. Yeah, it's a one to ten. True. Uh, just to circle back a little bit, uh, all their scopes and binoculars are all quality uh, ED glass from Japan, um, kind of like Night Force, which is obviously a really big name. Um, their LVPO, which you're talking about, it's a one to ten. Um, actually, the owners down at I believe Fort Bragg. I was just talking to my probably it's Fort Bragg or Fort, Fort Campbell. Bragg. Uh, he's actually doing some military thing right now. Uh, well, it's like a vendor day and a lot, he had a lot of positive feedback from the military. Uh, just on playing with it, testing it out, shooting it. And they're only what their apex is two years old now. Yeah. They're a fairly new company. Yep. Uh, they're making a big splash yep. in the whole market. The, the reason that, so he shot PRS in Canada and he said he could never find a scope that he truly enjoyed. And he said, you know what? I'm going to make my own. So this thing is literally tailored. The rival is tailored to a PRS shooter. Plain and simple. Um, could you hunt with it? A hundred percent. Well, but that's also why. So he had his own scope company. This was his first scope out, the rival. Yep. That's all he had. He's a backcountry, uh, sometimes a backcountry hunter, I would say, mm-hmm. from talking to him, right? Yep. So he's like, well, I have my own scope company. Why am I going to have someone else's scope on my hunting rifle? So he literally set out to make his own hunting scope. Yep. So that's how that 3 to 15 came about. And I, would, I wouldn't have a worry. And, you know, people talk about hunting. Like you could have a durable gun, right? You know, your old man's 30 out 6 that's been beat through the woods, drugged through the dirt. I would take this gun outside right now and drop it on a scope and go shoot it tomorrow. Wouldn't even worry about it. I mean, you probably can't see because – we kind of doctor them up a little bit, but we bang this thing off props. We bang it off barricades, literally everything, and they're always true to zero and yep. never had an issue. But that's what you, I mean, you know, and people want to scoff at paying fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars $2,000 for a scope, but the gun is only as good as the optic that's sitting on top of it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really do any good to have everything else dialed in to shoot long distance and not be able to see it exactly mm-hmm. and the old rule of thumb was whatever you pay for the rifle you should pay one and a half times for the optic that was the old rule of thumb that's a rule of thumb i still go by because yep. people ask me that all the time down at creek archery how much should i spend on accessories for my bow uh, you should 
at least one and a half. Yep. Mm-hmm. You got a thousand dollar bow, you better put don't put no sixty dollar sight on it. No. Or a thirty dollar whisker biscuit. Five hundred dollars go or five hundred dollar sight on my freaking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean are you gonna go shoot cheap arrows through a thousand dollar scope? No. No. Cheap arrows through a thousand dollar scope. Or uh, bow, yeah. Less dick sick. Um yeah, less dick sick for it, sure. It could be a crossbow. Oh, see? See? Those, yeah, back. those are bolts. I was gonna say that, but <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and you know, and it goes, it comes back even to the ammo we shoot. You know, I spent the past almost two hours lot testing new ammo because I'm almost out, and that's another. That's the problem. I don't want to say problem. Is that the right word? The issue with shooting twenty twos is it you can't reload, so you can't control your ammo. You can only buy ammo from the store. So at first, I was like, hell yeah, you know, spend. Eight dollars on a box of ammo, you got good ammo. Oh nay nay. Not the case. <laughs> you know, we're shooting uh I'm shooting Ely Match. Uh it's like fourteen bucks a box for fifty rounds. And they have lot numbers, so the machine that it comes off of, the time it was made, everything goes into that lot number. The test speed, everything yep. else. And one box to another box could be thirty or forty feet per second, and you know, you could go from a Point three group at 50 yards to a one inch group at 50 yards. That's huge. So we usually order, or at least I order five or six boxes of a lot of ammo of different, different lots. And I'll go shoot them at 1500 yards and see what they do. So that gun likes it because what my gun likes, his gun isn't going to like. Yeah. I mean, our guns right now, are they sit, they should like the same things because we got the same barrel from the same manufacturer, from the same gunsmith. Um, but that's not always been the case. Like, my prior gun, what his gun loved, my gun hated. And what his gun did okay with, my gun completely drove tax. So everything is extremely finicky and very niche. Yeah, all the way down to temperature. Yeah, I mean, we, we chronograph usually if we get big temperature swings, we'll chronograph at the match before we start shooting to adjust your speeds because, you know, everybody thinks 100 yards is a far shot for 22. Mm-mm. But you're also dropping – what, six inches, eight inches at 100 yards? So take that out to 200 yards. It's like 11 feet of drop or something like that. I'll probably tell you. So if you're off, if you're shooting a one-inch group at 100 yards and you're shooting a three-inch group at 200, well, that's not going to help you when you're shooting a three-inch target at 200 yards. Yeah. So, and you got to take into account your wobble factor. You know, either you're cold, your hands are cold, whatever's going on, you got to have a little bit of wiggle room there to make sure that that group's going to be what you need at target. Or just how stable you are on the, whether it's a table or a fence, a fence post, anything, yep. a tire. Well, that's uh, the interesting thing about this is it's not just bench shooting that you guys do. No. Very, very, very little of it is off of bench. Yeah, like we have these fancy bipods. They're pretty much gun holders yeah. that literally – might use them for sighting in in the morning to make sure we're straight and maybe one or two stages. Yeah. So at 200 yards, it's four foot of drop from a 50 yard zero at 300 yards. It's 139 inches. All right, Mr. Mathman, how many feet? Almost 12. Yeah. X yeah, one forty four is 12. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, at 12, at 300 yards, you're, you're aiming 12 feet over the target. By the way, I'm gonna take a half a second here and pat myself on yeah, the back. Yeah, that was good. For, that was so. Johnny on the spot right there. Yeah, yeah. We got a saying that I don't math, like I don't. He I also can't. can't spell, do directions. Nah, yeah, pretty much. I can shoot. That's about it. Yeah, he's really good <laughs> with his one tr- one trigger finger. That's and all. fish. I can't that fish. That too. I gotta take the old man fishing for his birthday this year. You have to, or going to? I'm going to because it'd be the first time that we both fished in like a year and a half. Yeah. I know, I'm still waiting to go steelhead fishing. Let's load them up. I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> Some of us got a real job. <laughs> we don't get to drive concrete trucks for a living. I'm going to drive a concrete when it, truck. When it rains, you get to get day off because nobody hey. wants to work in the I rain. I worked in the rain. It rained today and we both worked. I, I don't. Is it on Is it on Facebook? I don't well, believe you had, that. Well, he does. I don't believe it. If you had Snapchat, I would have Snapchat you swore. I do have Snapchat, and you send them to me all the time. <laughs> Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, because I was bitching about the lightning storm this morning. They're like, yeah, you want to put a boom in the air? I'm like, not happening, buddy. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's just Pennsylvania weather. Dude, it's It's nuts. lightning right now. I just seen it up. Is it, it, of the... It's been doing it for a couple minutes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so hopefully the power don't go out. Oh, that would suck. I'll sit here and do it in the dark. I don't care. You got candles? I'm also glad I don't have the bike tonight. Do we have the battery pack in there? No. Do you we'll think I'm that prepared? Amateurs. Amateur hour over here. To go back you, you think that we're that prepared? I thought maybe you just like left it in there. No. No. That's that. think, think about a nice romantic podcast by Candlelight. <laughs> Four guys, two guns, a couple candles. <laughs> and, and looking at fur coach. <laughs> Jeez. Pornhub, here we come. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dude, the Iowa Trappers Association. Prestige Furs donated a vest for them. Made of what? Red Fox. That thing's badass. Look at that. Do you think about shooting foxes with 22, though? I know. Here, let, let me see that. 2500 bucks. Oof. All right. Well, hold on here, because I got to at least get this on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody watching on YouTube knows what my partner is doing while we're doing oh, look, podcast. Look yeah. who's calling. Oh, geez. Andrew Wait. Davis. Andrew. Hey, he'll take you still high fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Professional guide. Three weekends up and supposed to be gone. They said the spring run was actually pretty killer this year, which we usually don't get a good spring run. We also didn't get a winner. You're right. That, yeah, I no. mean, plain and simple, we didn't get a winner. Yeah, it made us nice for shooting. I mean, we shot some bad uh, weather this We year. still traveled for snow. Yeah. we A couple weekends ago, we shot in like eight inches of snow in New York. It's like... No snow down here. Anything else? We go up there and it's fresh. Yeah, we left and it was what thirty degrees. We're like, hell yeah, good shooting weather. You get across the, the across eighty six up there and it was just snow everywhere. He calls one. He doesn't an answer. He's calls gonna call the, the other. other. Oh yeah, I know what he's calling about. We'll talk about it after the podcast is over. Well, I think I may have asked this question like twenty minutes ago, and. As usual, we went down rabbit holes. Yeah, yeah. What goes into preparing for a match? I told you, plan of fitness. <laughs> Listen, I try to go to the gym about once a week nowadays. Look at him, can't you tell? Wow. Yeah, I think he just needs a bigger shirt. But <laughs> stop shopping at the Baby Gap. Wow, uh, prep <laughs> preparation basically is. Making sure your ammo and your data is all lining up. If you do that, that's like the biggest battle. Um, all right. And the way you said data. Yes. Explain. So 50 yards, you should be zero, zero. 100 yards, you should be between one seven and one nine, mm -hmm. like 1.7, 1.9. Low. No. Well, yeah, like that would, that would be on your dial. Like okay. I would dial it to whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask this. We've been talking pretty much this whole podcast about long range shooting. Yep. Why zero at 50? So it gives you, so how do I put this? Okay. It you want me, yeah, you yeah, me do it? So we do shoot underneath 100 yards. Okay. Sometimes we'll shoot all the way down to 25-ish yards. Yep. We've shot 15 before. It gets a little sporty. Um, basically, yes, if you do a 50-yard zero, you can also shoot down to 25 yards, and it kind of lines back up. like Within a tenth or two. Yeah, I don't remember the exact yardage but most of our guns dial down to four under or five tenths under if you dial it a hundred you don't have enough to go down in your scope to shoot the closer targets and then you're guessing yes okay yeah. so now that's like the reason why we do it most people do it and also because almost every range is 50 yard sight of zero yeah so they give you you know 30 to 30 minutes to an hour before you go to a match you know you sign in you pay your entrance fee and they give you the time to go check because if you're traveling and like this is the other thing with 22s is if you travel from here to, to North Carolina or here to Missouri or somewhere that's far, your 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 zero is going to be off due to elevation, temperature, weather, whatever's going on. So if you need to adjust it to ten, two tenths, whatever, they give you that little bit of time to get it dialed in. And um, so they give you usually 50, 100 and some places will give you a target at like 200 or something. Because you've got to think about, like, everybody knows that 22s don't shoot far. So the drop is, the, cur the ballistic curve is extreme. It's not like shooting a centerfire rifle. So you go out and you shoot, 
your hundred, your fifteen hundred yards, and then you go out and shoot two hundred. And hey, I'm supposed to be six eight, six point eight mils, but I'm seven. Yeah, but I'm seven today. Well, now everything in between there is going to be a little bit off. And some of the targets we shoot are small enough that that two tenths can make you miss a target. And it's only going to exponentially grow as you go out. So if next thing you know, you go from a stage that's fifty to hundred yards somewhere in there. You got to go shoot a three hundred yard stage. Well, now you're a mil low for some reason. You might not be able to see your impacts. You might you might just be missing and to miss. You think you're good, but you're not. So you have to like we use ballistic calculators, applied ballistics. We we use Kestrels, um, and they build it'll build you a custom curve for your rifle with whatever wizardry that goes on inside that little orange box because that's all it is is black box. Yeah, you got a black box. That sounds dirty. <laughs> um, I mean, yours orange just because of the beard, right? 100%. Um, hey, I'm now known as Mr. Viking. <laughs> just because you take your sh- jacket off and shoot in the cold once. <laughs> Did you? No. Well, no. I'm well, intelligent. Mr. Viking. I'm yeah. intelligent. <laughs> yeah, everybody's out there bundled up, and I got a T-shirt on and an old puffy jacket that's losing feathers like he wouldn't believe. He's turning blue. Yeah, but I'm comfy. What do you think about puffy jackets there, Rob? Yeah, I'm you, not going to say nothing. I, You know, I'm going to buy Rob a puffy jacket for Christmas. I'll split it's it with you. Not going to happen. Did you never been that warm in your life? I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no puffy jacket. <sighs> puffy jacket's the way to go. So we kind of started down prep. Yeah, we keep now. going. We well, just keep going away from it. Well, no, we don't because it... This is to me. This shows how invested you need to be into mm-hmm. this and and everything that goes into it. People could probably look at this and go, "They're just shooting twenty twos. It's not that complicated." Yeah. And, and that was kind of the point of the podcast here is something that's fun but mm-hmm. also challenging. Oh yeah. So I wanted to go. You know, you said data. I want to know what that means. What yep. what that goes into. Yeah. So data. I'll go back to it. It's basically making sure you're lined up at the known ranges. So you can calculate something down the road. You don't need something as advanced as a Kestrel. There's an app that I think you talked about on the last podcast. Straight it's up. like 15 yeah. bucks as long as they don't take it away. I think Russian. they took it away. It's Russian, so they might have took it away. I think Apple dropped it. I don't think you can download Straylock anymore. But yeah. if you're one of them weird Android users, you'll be fun. Oh, now he's staring at me. <laughs> I'm going to get kicked out. We're talking um, about that puffy jacket now. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, make sure your data is lined up. That's step one. Step two is you kind of go into, for practice wise, what different positions you can shoot from, how to get comfortable, how to stay steady. And then I would say next is time management. Yeah. So how fast can you get into it? Like we're trying to break our first shot within the first 10 seconds and that's starting a couple feet behind a prop or a bench or whatever we're shooting off of putting our bags down that, or whatever we're using, probably putting a bag down, getting the gun on it, getting on target, and then getting ready to start squeezing the trigger all within 10 seconds. So, and that's the other thing is a lot of these, so these stages, it's called a two minute stage, right? There very well can be 10 different, tar- or 10 targets at 10 different ranges, or there could be one target at 10 different positions off a of barricade. So every time you pull the trigger, you have to leave the bolt open, pick your gun up, go to another position and mm-hmm. shoot the same target again. Or there could be three different targets that you shoot off of. You build a position on one place. You shoot, let's say, a target 50 yards. You shoot a target 100 yards. You shoot a target 200 yards. Then you move and you go 50, 100, 200. Then you move again and go 50, 100, 200. So it's all about that time management that comes into play and trusting your dope, trusting your scopes, trusting your gun, that every time you dial that turret, it's the bullet's going to go where you ant- anticipate it to go. Mm-hmm. And that's where the benefit of a good optics like Apex comes in. 100%. Absolutely. Um, yep. So for kind of the positional stuff, for people who don't know what we're really talking about, just think of a set of steps. You can get a stringer at Lowe's. You yep. have how many steps on it. Each position would be you shoot from a step, maybe once or twice, then you move down, and you have to re-engage the same target. You keep moving down and down and down and down and down. And people think, oh, it's not that hard. Try and get in some of them positions. You're not stable. You're not comfortable. You're not going to like it. Yeah. And you have to do all that within two minutes. And I don't think we've actually clarified this. 
What size targets are we shooting at here? So that's. I'm going to guess that it's not you know like a six foot target. Out. No. no. So let's say at 50 yards, we have a KYL. Yep. It goes from what an inch down to a quarter two, inch. Two inch. No, it's two inches. Two inch and a half inch. Yeah, two inches down to a quarter inch target. And that's so, it, usually 50 yards. Some people get crazy and take them out to like 70, 80 <laughs> yeah. yards. Um, and Simmons, then you got, if you're listening, that 69 KOL, bullshit. Just wait till the next match. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, and then like you got to 100, what's the average? Three inch? They try to stay two to four MOA. So most people know what MOA is. So one MOA at 100 yards is one inch. So two to four is like a two to four inch target ish. So at 200 yards, you're talking a four to eight inch plate. You know, guys will play with that like five and six inch plate at 200 yards, and I mean that's mm-hmm. a small target. You know, you're shooting a, you're shooting a one MOA group, but you have to add in your instability. You're, you're you're not stable, so your wobble zone sometimes is more than the plate is big. Oh, or just your actual group. Just think of the top of a pop can, a beer can, whatever. Yeah. Say that's your group. Say that target's only a half inch bigger each way. You have a little bit of wobble in there, you're going to miss it. You calculate the win wrong, you're going to miss it. Yep. How's the scoring work? It's a point per hit. Like what? the last match we just shot was a So night. you hit it, it's a point. Yes. Doesn't matter where it's at. There's, if it's you not ju- like archery where there's, you know, a 10, yep. an 8, a 6. You if know, you so just on. barely touch it and it shakes, that's still an impact. Okay. Yeah. Because if it was like archery, it'd be too hard. We don't paint everything. Sometimes they don't even paint them at all. So you're shooting, you know, lead on steel. It spalls the paint. You can't really see where exactly you hit unless it's a clean target. And sometimes, like, I think the match we shot Saturday had 83 shooters. It's That's 830 rounds on a target. If, you, if, if everyone hits it, that's 830 rounds on a target. Yeah, so by the end of the day, it's silver. Yes. Yeah. So now you're trying to find, and that's the back of the apex, you're finding the silver target in the shadows of the woods to shoot at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they don't just set them out there in the middle of a field for you. Not all the time. Well, there are some matches, but in the middle of a field might be worse because you can't see if you're missing or something else. Yeah, I don't like big field matches. <laughs> no, I like stuff with somewhat of a backdrop. Yeah, because that's the other thing is that you know you miss and you can actually watch your splash wherever land hit or the round hits. Like, oh man, that wind's way worse than I thought it was. I need to hold, you know, another mill off the left edge or mill to center, whatever it's going to be. And you don't believe how much wind affects a 22, but when it gets out there, I mean, you're holding. Oh, you mean holding like a mill and a half at, what was it, 126 yards? Yeah. Yeah, so you're talking, you know, six inches off of a plate at 100 yards. Not something you're going to go do with your duplex reticle, you know, loophole. Two to seven loophole, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Come on. I miss full-size deer at 50 yards. (laughs) I can do it with a twenty-two. Oh yeah, heck yeah! If only they what, would miss a deer. No, you're not allowed <laughs> to shoot a twenty-two at deer. Thank you very much. Depends Depends twenty-two what country you're hunting in. Pennsylvania you cannot. But if we could, headshots all day. Yeah, eyeballs. They'd be keeping us away from the woods. Yeah. Now I do have a question. We're talking about the time mm-hmm. and time management. One thing, Rob, I think you'll agree that we deal a lot with down at Crick Archery is punching the trigger on their release. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. How do you guys go about not just, I oh, mean, I'm on target. You got to push, you, pull, trigger, or you no. pull just and release? Pushes. So well, well, Let me jump in this first because we were just in Texas, Texas in December, and I picked up a horrible habit of slapping the trigger, which is what we call it. Yeah, I mean, that's what so, we call it down at the bow shop, and, yeah. and I'm thinking 10 seconds. Yeah. Man, you're getting on target. How do you just squeeze like you're supposed to? Practice to practice is one thing, and then I switch to a two-stage trigger. I run my first stage kind of light, but I just know it's like coming up, coming up, coming up. Then I start building some pressure, and it's mostly repetitive. Like, you know when you squeeze the trigger well. You know when you jerk something. You know when you're a little forceful. Um, so it's a lot of muscle memory. But for me, I switched to a two-stage, and it helped me immensely. And, I, and I'm probably going to switch to stage. I would say I see two very different looking triggers yeah. on these. This, so what I'm shooting now is a Calvin Elite, a Timney Calvin Elite. I bought it because I wanted to be some, try something just off the wall. Mm-hmm. And I don't have any complaints about it at all. Okay, I do have one. You can't adjust the trigger weight 
without taking the barreled action out of the chassis. So I have to pull the gun out of the chassis mm-hmm. and adjust trigger weight and put it back in. With a trigger tech, which is the superior trigger, you can just, there's an Allen key right here. Right and it bottom. goes in through the bottom yep. of everything. And which you can adjust it. And so I used to run a trigger tech diamond single stage and I run it at seven ounces, eight ounces. Wow. Way too, way too light. I would yeah. say that sounds. Yeah. Now some people run their triggers extremely light, but talking and to other good shooters, people who are definitely trying to grow. I started turning my poundage up because yep. it's going to let me know if I'm just like half grazing, if I'm floating, if whatever. I know that when I'm squeezing the heavier trigger, I'm more centered on the target because if the light trigger it gives you too much forgiveness, you can easily rush something you can accidentally I, set yes. around. Yes. And that's a big thing in our game is if you, we call them ADs and NDs, accidental discharge, negligent discharge. You do that, you're done. Yeah. Safety is a big, big, big part of our game. I mean, you're walking around moving with loaded guns. Well, they're not loaded because you said you've got to have the action open. You do. So, yeah, right like that is right now. Yep. That's how you have to transition from this this point to the next point to the next point. Which like, I'm glad that you brought up. I'm glad you brought up the safety because that was one of the things I picked up when you said – Moving from target to target, yeah. action is open. So what happens a lot of times is guys will get rushed with that time in their head, and they'll slam the gun down, they'll close their bolt, then try to find a target. Well, in that time that you're trying to find a target, you know, if it's in a field somewhere, the bolt's closed, well, you've got your hand, you know, un- you know, subconsciously, you've got your finger on the trigger waiting to go. Well, you might send that round, and who knows, it might go up over a berm. You don't know where it's going to go. So for us, that's a big, big deal. And don't think that it can't just happen to anyone because we literally had probably one of the top five shooters well, in he, the country, well, he e- won, easily he, the world. Well, he uh, won PRS, right? Yeah. Yeah, he won PRS nationals. And, and he just had an accident. Yep. Granted, he was everything was safe. It was in a safe direction, but he was not on target. He was a couple feet, whichever way. And he was, like I said, it was 90 seconds. Everyone was not rushing around, but most people don't run 90-second stages. Yep. And it just got away from him. And he sent around and got DQ'd from a big match. Yeah, he probably drove 12 hours for it. Easy. Just, one, you know, one stupid mistake will just, you know, and that's what it is. And the cold plays effect into it, too, like wearing gloves, anything else. Yep. Well, that's why Viking kept it the same. That's it, buddy. Now, he shot in gloves before. Don't let him fool it you. sucks to shoot in gloves. I always try to take it off, and sometimes, you're like, in that moment, you forget, and you're like, damn it, I've got my gloves on. Nothing feels right. Well, actually, I shot a stage on Sunday, and I'm like, so a Canadian friend of ours just sent us pictures. I'm like, I didn't even realize I shot with gloves on that stage because every other stage, I'm like, Justin, grab this. Yep. And I'll hurry up and go through bitch. it. Well, I mean, you have to be good for something. Oh, well, that's it. Why don't you get mittens that fold so you got... I have thought about that. So my I mean, thing is they're kind of big and clunky. I don't like gloves at all, but it was like 12 degrees with the wind chill on Sunday. So I was just wearing them in between stuff. Um, I think with the mittens that fold back... We yeah, there's a couple people that shoot them. I the think wool, it gets snagged the wool on ones are the safety because yeah. that's what I wear when I'm muzzleloader hunting. Yep, that's why I used to wear when I fished. Because when I ones. pop that back trigger on my muzzleloader, that front trigger, if you try sliding a finger in there with a glove on, forget it. Mm-hmm. It's going off. Yeah. So I just use hand warmers. Yes, oh, that's primarily what we use. I think we've bought we should have bought stock in hand warmers by now, <laughs> right? I I've been trying to get them as a sponsor. Oh, that'd be great. You know, right? Just we send should. us a couple truckloads of them because we're going to use them. Well, see, like you guys do it with your shooting. I do it with running the camera. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about it. You yeah. Know, when, when we're out hunting and I'm running camera, I use my lightweight turkey gloves. So you can feel have, everything. I can feel the buttons on my camera. The dexterity. Look at that those, word. Wow. Those do not work when it's freezing out. No. Hell, I put the... Hand warmers on the batteries. I get the sticky ones to keep the batteries from dying. Yeah. And so he does it with his ammo because the ammo he uses, it has a wax on it. It's, act- mi- it's actually beef tallow wax. Yes. Yeah. So it gums up when it gets real cold. Yeah, yeah a lot of that stiff. target ammo comes with either a wax or the beef tallow wax. Yep. So it'll actually... I, saw, I shot some indoor 22 paper Why when I was I younger. What have you not done in the outdoors? I just don't talk about it. He doesn't wear puppy jackets in the outdoors. Well, no, he hasn't. You know, he hasn't evolved yet. He's still stuck in the old um, old so, time. So you've got to keep your ammo 
at a somewhat consistent temperature. Yes. He does. He doesn't. I don't. I, use, I shoot a different ammo, which I'm probably going to switch back to what he's shooting. All right, who needs a beer? Uh, I got my whole case right yeah, I'm sitting right next to my case, but I'm smart. Okay. I mean, I know you don't have one of these, but I'll take another None one. None of that foo-foo, peanut butter, whatever. Ten percenters. Beer is a beer to me. I, I'm not going to be picky. <laughs> I can start passing them over the table if you want. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. That's right. But, yeah, I mean, if you want to oh. – Good, put your, put your finger on that trigger. No. Why? Because I don't put my finger on the trigger. Okay. Okay. So we were talking Wait, about safety. Safe. safety. Yeah, look at this. So it's safe. This is a mag flag. Uh, if you want to put that up closer to the camera, it's yeah. something that – so the bolt – I'll put it back in for a second. The cannot close. Travel forward. You have to use this or a chamber indicator or – Anything like that when you're transporting from stage to stage to stage. So that one, like some people give me crap because it's black on the bottom just because it blends in with the rest of the gun. But the red is very prominent visual in the, in the chamber. So that way, whenever you're moving, you know, because, you know, we walk stage to stage or whatever it is up and down roads where you're not roads, but like trail roads down ranges. That way, everybody knows your gun's safe whenever you're transporting your rifle. Also, over ice, through oh, mud. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. What is this, a charcuterie board? Yeah, I guess Sheila bought one. She just texted me and told me to get it out for you guys. Look at that. <laughs> Only 45 minutes in. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I gotta... I'll be chewing in the camera. Yeah, I know. I don't want to be like, crunch, 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 crunch. We're popping tops. They, they know what we are here. <laughs> Degenerates. Now, one thing that has kind of stuck out to me, and it's on your Matt's mind. doing his whole podcast because I'm over here yeah. like reading new laws that's been put into Montana for trapping, and it's like really. Would well, you me see off. what the hell is going on in Washington State? Yeah, no, they're trying to do a full on assault ban, and it's assault rifle ban, and it's like almost passed in the law. Yeah, well, I mean, think about what you're talking about, Washington State. I know we're going to get political here for a second. Nothing but a bunch of. Calm, live out there in calm, calm, and they, you know, you <laughs> take a sip of your Forget Budweiser. It. I'm not even gonna do it because my blood pressure just went up three notches right there, and my head's about. Well, it's it's blood. the same thing that we deal with. So, like, we travel to New York and New Jersey and other states to shoot. How's that go? I you oh. couldn't pay me to travel to New York or New Jersey with a gun. I mean, New we're, Jersey got awesome pizza joint, and take your gun. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, we had no issues. Given right to carry your gun, the hell with these states and their goddamn laws. But like, we're not supposed to travel with anything other than twelve ten round mag. Well, Jersey, they said as long as it's not a semi-automatic, yeah, you're fine. They say that New York's kind of. We've heard different mixed things, but actually, we were uh, going to take the next step up soon and probably at least travel to Canada once or twice and deal with the uh, Good Lord, uh, border. Eh? Eh? Why would you go up there? <laughs> I want to see nothing up there but bears and Eskimo women. Hey. Have you ever seen some Eskimo women? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> I got no problems with Canada. Me either. It's a good no, time. Dude. Yeah. Oh, it's fun in Canada. Can I drink Molson straight from the tap? What, what the happens teat? in Canada stays in Canada. <laughs> hey, I, I you, you like Bud Light Lime? Moosehead light lime is 10 times better. Really? I swear. Just don't order a cheeseburger from McDonald's. Why? Because you get relish, not ketchup. Actually, they No. Yeah, yeah, don't you get mayo, too? Yeah. Wow, we were getting way off topic here. <laughs> like vinegar no, for a- your Apex french fries? Apex is a Canadian. They're... Yeah, it's fine. Well, they were, So we shot with them Saturday or Sunday. We, yeah, we've met a lot of, we shot a lot really of our, cool Canadian yeah, people. Our team, our, a bunch of our like teammates, us. actually. And you know they only have like blueberry, cherry, and brown maple sugar Pop-Tarts. Mm-hmm. That's all they have. They don't have cookies and cream? No s'mores. Fruit Loops? Nothing. What the f- Justin's going to start being dude, the, like dealer for Pop-Tarts. Dude, I love Pop-Tarts. I eat Pop-Tarts like every dude, day. Dude, like an international drug dealer will be selling <laughs> Pop-Tarts over the Canadian border. We're going to get a text message next week. Do you guys know any pilots? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I had a s'mores one today. It was delicious. They don't know anything did about Did you it. send a picture to Colin? I did. Bro, I'm about to- I'm about to send seven cases over the border. Five dollars a tart, not even two. 
a tart, not a bag. You're getting one pop tart for mm-hmm. five bucks. Mm-hmm. That's like that's like a dollar thirty five in Canadian money. Uh, I, I, don't know. <laughs> I haven't kept up with current. All I know, and I, maybe they've changed it, but the Canadian dollar is identical to our quarter as far as size. I yeah, see, about, it's not even paper. Yeah, I have what? about fifty of them. At so home. it's like euros now. Yeah. Euros were all yeah, and their money's paper. not green. But blue. Oh, no, red, seriously. When I went to a bunch of different time, kind of colors. I thought they were handing me quarters back. No, they're dollars. Yeah. I came home thinking I had $5 in quarters. I had about $50 in ones. Yeah. You know. Oh, well, Rob, you said I've been doing this whole podcast. Do you have any questions for Tyler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, Rob. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This whole shooting thing to me is kind of, I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. I guess I got to go watch it. You know what I mean? Because I'm, when I'm thinking of these guys shooting, I'm thinking about the cowboy action shooting. Mm-hmm. And I do them muzzleloader shoots. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys are kind of the same thing. You're shooting at steel targets. Yeah. Which we do with the muzzleloader. But some of the steel stuff we shoot at isn't made to be shot at. But, you know, I think, I don't know. I think it's interesting. I just got to go watch it, you know. I mean, if you're going to come watch it, we're going to make you do it. Well, I'm sure I'll end up doing it. I, I mean, mean, there's no doubt about it. Once I go see something, if I like it, mm-hmm. you might as well forget it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, so the biggest thing with shooting 22s is it's relatively inexpensive. You don't have to wear your protection. You can hear thousands of rounds a day, and you don't have to put earplugs in or muffs, which you can. And then, I don't know, Justin's walking back down the steps. Shooting 22s is just fun. Yeah. You get around your buddies. We're, we're supposed to be professional, but we mess around way more than. So uh, are we, but you see how this podcast is run. <laughs> this is the most professional thing I've ever seen. I don't believe it for a second. Yes, it is. Um, and yeah. this is probably about as professional as you'll ever see me. <laughs> the best part about 22s is there's no ear pro. What did Rob, I just say? Did you say, I wasn't here, okay? Yeah, seriously, dude. Jesus. Get with the like, program. Now we went back 10 minutes and everything's all screwed. And Rob's back to cowboy action and muzzle letters. Yeah. You missed a lot. I got, apparently in a minute and a half, I missed a whole pile. <laughs> Should have kept that gator so going with you. Have, do you have this same electronic level that he doesn't? Old Justin got to have over here. He can't hold his gun straight. He got to have a freaking electronic level. No, is I like tried and is? true bubble no. level. No, it's this thing right here. Probably beeps at him when it's off center and everything. It does. Beep, you're not in the right spot. No, my, I run a LRA send it level, and it if the battery wasn't dead because I'm an idiot and it was cold and I left it on the whole way home. Uh, it flashes green for center. That's why I like yours, Tyler. Yeah. Yep, no always works. Electronics. Yep. It flashes green. It doesn't flash. It's solid green for level. Green means go. Yep. Blue for can't left and red for can't right. See, it's the same thing with them guys with the bows, with the electronic sights. You know? You you, you tilt them the wrong way, they light up and all that crap. Yep. And It's just another thing to go wrong while you're out there. And truthfully, you should have a level on it, but shooting Pennsylvania, you can usually get your T-post or target hang or whatever else relatively plumb. You can use your reticle, but that's just like a fail safe. Sometimes you use it, sometimes you don't. I usually don't worry about it unless I'm out past 150 yards. I was going to say, I can see a level being really good if you're out past 100 yards. Yeah. yeah. And that's pretty you much know. that's the only time I really look at the it. The same with a bow. Out, anything out past 50 yards, yeah, I do pay attention to my level. Mm-hmm. You know, when we're 3D shooting. Yeah. I'm deer hunting. I ain't shooting out past 50 yards. No. Um, but it's definitely, you know, I've played with it. I've like tried to super cant my gun at like a hundred yards. It'll move you an inch if you put enough can into it. But generally you're shooting a target big enough that you're going to yeah. hit it if you're trued up. But you get out 250, 300 yards and you're not level. It'll, it'll, it'll screw you up. All right. Now what is this contraption? Yeah. Which part of it? So I run, I run differently than him. This, Maybe, yeah. So the this card removal, like when you have a stage, and this is this is actually a really good indicator. We had a stage where there were square targets and there was rectangle car- targets. 
Okay, so that's a rectangle. The, yeah, when you're cold, you need to just draw things, right? He's just he needs a crayon. Yeah, he needs to go back to art class. I'm actually good at painting. But Finger yeah. painting. Hey, did you say squ- uh, rectangle and, uh, and circle? Square. Okay, I was going to say, because all, all, all day you said circle. I did circle, say circle all circle. day. I'm like, yeah, shoot that circle. No, it's a square. <laughs> Listen, I don't math. I don't know shapes. I don't, yeah, I just don't do it. Um, I squeeze trigger. Yeah. I cast line. He went That's to a it. Catholic school, and you know how he graduated. But <laughs> I, I was the janitor. <laughs> you might have cleaned something up. <laughs> All right, now what is this? Because so, this, I've been staring at I know, this I've seen you staring the at entire it. hour. The yeah. piece of paper, I hope everybody can. We shoot. can probably pull it up there, but so you had to shoot the squares from one, and this was off a bench, but you couldn't sit it. Well, I guess you could have sat at the bench. Mm, not enough time. Uh, yeah, not enough time. But so you got on the bench, bag in the rear, bipod in the front, and you would shoot square number one, which was 0.8 mils, two times. You would transition to the next square, which was 3.1 mils, two times. Then you go to the next square, which was 5.9 mils. What was it? Probably 160 or just yeah. ish. Shoot it two times. Then you would pick your gun up, move to the bench that was like eight feet, ten feet to your right, and there was a bunch of rectangles. You would shoot the same thing two times at 1.9 mils, two times at 4.5, and two times at 7.4. Now, how did you get those numbers? Did they give you that? Or they no? give you the range. They you can you also range. range find them yourself, but most match directors, they give you – Fairly accurate information, so you can get your dope card, your data. I like how he said fairly accurate. Sometimes, fairly. sometimes they're off. I mean, sometimes you go shoot a stage, and the target says 140 yards. Well, it's actually 130. And well, it 100, can, that's That 10 yards is enough to make you completely miss because the target's small enough. And it could be that the match director was by themselves. It was raining. Um, they, Snowing. They, they, yeah. It could be a bunch of different things. that is isn't their fault. You know, if you're going to try and compete at a high level, you should check everything. Yeah. You know, dot your T's. So this no, is all dot the, your I's, cross your T's. Yeah. So this. <laughs> apparently, you don't talk now. I just I don't math. You don't talk. <laughs> but I'm nervous. I'm For jo- what? I'm not nervous. I'm joking. Um. So this was 12 rounds in a minute and a half or minute five. Wow, 105 seconds. See, I can't even talk either. Um. But to dial all that, find the targets in the middle of a field. That's a pile of movement to try to remember that. So if it's sitting there. You might be able to do the first three off memory, but what happens if you're halfway through? You go, well, I don't remember where that target was or what my dope was. You're taking a shot in the wind. You know, you're you're totally guessing. Now you look at that. Is this that's give a, you your time? That's my timer. Yeah. So okay. I set it. You know, I'm not going to do it because it beeps like crazy. But you set it to whatever time limit you're set. You're shooting 105 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes, and that way I can watch it count down and know where I'm at, sort of. Hey, I need to pick it up, or hey, I got three seconds to make two sh- or thirty seconds to make th- two shots. I'm gonna take my time and squeeze triggers the way I'm supposed to. So that's like the most new thing that we've both adopted. He started with it. I say, I'm. I was just gonna say, I'm seeing two different shooting styles. So I run man. mine down here. Tyler got yeah. we little tiny. Yep. Yes. Which, okay. My new chassis. It's gonna be all the way back here. It's gonna be like right in front of my face. I, say, I do not see that it's one because it's tucked on this side. Yeah. Of the gotcha. It's only about the size of a quarter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. uh like, he runs his data up on his scope. I don't like a bunch of stuff floating all around, getting banged off everything. So I wear mine on my, like, forearm, just like a football player. Like a quarterback. Mm. Yes. That's how I run mine. And more comfortable, more used to it, yeah. whatever it be. Just always. I, I didn't get one of them fancy wristbands as a lineman. Uh, you can, you can get it on defense as a lineman. That's how I got mine. No. No, offensive lineman, they didn't give me anything. Nope. No, we didn't have all that sophisticated shit when I played football. What, 1990, 1910 or something yeah, like that? Yeah. He just carried around we, like stone, like the <laughs> Ten Commandments for rocking tablets. each other. And <clears throat> yeah. Ooga dooga. <laughs> <laughs> dilly dilly. Ooh, wow, I heard that one a long time. <laughs> all right, so we have covered a, a ton of ground on this. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting subject. I mean... I feel like we've covered a lot, but we've missed a lot as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Where can people find more information about this? Where can – can we come watch these shows? Oh, 100%. That, mm-hmm. 100%. So and where can people he's find He's doing this because he's telling you guys we're about out of time, so hurry to shit up. Yeah. <laughs> it's drinking time. <laughs> it's, so the best thing to do, I say, is is go online. There's a website called Practice Score. 
and it has all of the matches that are in your local area on there. Um, but like for us, if you're in this area, Centerboro Sportsman Club, just outside of Brownsville, every fourth Sunday we hold a match, and it's NRL 22, so it's your basic match. We're real laid back. If you want, to, if you show up and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Can I try?" You'll probably have five guys hold a gun in your face and go, "Which one do you want to play with?" I will let yeah. anybody shoot my gun. I don't care. Well, I think we might have to go to one of these and film a little bit so people know what's going on. That would be cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, the more we've talked about this now, I'm not going to get into it because I can't shoot for shit. It'll make you a better shooter. I'm not going to get into it because I got enough with the freaking motorcycles. Yeah. Spend way too much money. I got enough. I don't worry about shooting rifles. I care less about a rifle. He can't hit anything with a rifle. No, (laughs) absolutely. Hey, anybody that's listened. A couple years ago, he had a deer like at the bottom of the ladder stand and still missed him. Yeah, exactly. Give me a bow, it's dead. Like emptied his clip on his deer and never touched him. <laughs> True story. But, yeah, like we got guys that come, there's two guys, or one guy come out this Sunday. We're shooting out there Sunday. He's coming out and we're like, whose gun do you want to shoot? What do you want to shoot? And he's like, no, I'm just coming to watch. I want to analyze, make sure that I know what I'm getting myself into. He's going to shoot. He's going to shoot. Um, you know, I don't know what the – the fan base is around here. There's shoots in uh, Kennerdale. Shoots. Where's Charlie's at? Cheswick. Rosedale. Cheswick. Cheswick. Um, some in Morgantown or Fairmont. Um, there's some fairly local shoots that, and you're always welcome to come watch, come play. And like I said, at the end of the day, if there's something you want to try or play with, we'll give you whatever we have to shoot and play. Because there's nothing more like it goes back to the whole two A thing. You have to get new people into the sport, mm-hmm. or two A's yeah. gonna die. Yep. Yeah, so the other thing I'll add to Justin is practice score, it's a choppy site. It if you want to actually go on like NRL 22 or Precision Rimfire Series, that might be easier. Um, Facebook is also Facebook's very – yeah, you can find 100 guys. Be careful who you listen to. Some people will give you great information. Some people will give you what they prefer. Um, but that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of some of these people that shoot. And if there's anybody listening to this podcast, they can find me on Facebook and – and I'll just shoot me a message, and I'll get you lined up. Once he gets his new gun back, I'll have another loaner set up. Yeah. So I'll have ammo and, and a gun just sitting in the case waiting to be shot. All right. Well, that sounds like an open challenge to see if somebody wants to reach out and, and try this out. So, guys, I appreciate you coming on. Rob, any closing remarks here? No, I mean, you guys got sponsors you got to give a shout-out to there. Uh, biggest one right now is uh, Apex Optics. Yep. We've been sponsored since – it's fairly new, since January. We yep. shot our first match in January with them. Um, the scopes are great. They're a new company. They want to grow the sport, and they are one of the few companies that are kind of geared towards rimfire. Yep. Most guys are just all center fire all day. Apex has given everyone a chance, and they're a new, hungry company. Yep. Is there yeah. a uh, – Vonnie and Carly are the legit yeah. Facebook page or something for them to mm, just Apex, Apex Optics. Apex Optics. Yep. Okay. Yep, Website. It. It's Apex Optics skin. Yep. Okay. Um, you can put MDT in there too. Yeah, we're. You guys got Facebook and. Yep. Let them know your Justin Facebook Lyons stuff. over there, and then I'm Tyler Demarcus, which is very hard to spell. <laughs> ain't nobody it, ever going to find out. If one. you spell Justin Lyons with a Y. Tyler yeah, Puffy good. Jacket, it might pop up. No, it's Tyler Del Monaco Steak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's my stage name. <laughs> well, when he wears his Puffy Jacket. Yes. Come on, you're catching on now. <laughs> well, buddy, you know what that sound means. It's time to pay bills. It is time to pay some bills here, so... Creek Archery, find your passion and hunt it down. Stop down there and see Chris when he isn't wearing that sick of stuff. He's in the archery shop trying to sell bows. And he ain't a very good salesman, so you got to go down there and see Walt or one of them other fellas down there. They'll hook you up with a good bow. Chris will get you shooting, playing golf or some crap. So stop down, Creek Archery. Find your passion and hunt it down. And we got Hillview Motors, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, your one-stop shop for all your automobile needs. Looking for a new, used, certified pre-owned? Stop in and see our good buddy Steve Huba and the rest of the fantastic. One more time. Huba Steve. That's right. See him and the rest of the fantastic sales team. 
If you need to have the oil change, brake works, anything service related, stop back air, get it checked out. If you've hit one of these unfortunate critters roaming the woods or just another person, barrier, whatever, whatever you've hit, your you car's been damaged. too many to drink on and you bump the guardrail. That's it. Stop back there and see Butch at the Collision Center for certified to work on all makes and models. Once they get it back looking brand new, they'll get it detailed for you. Get right back, back here and see you. Joe and them fellas. They'll shine you up. Check them out at hillviewmotors.com. And remember, Hillview has it. Duke Traps. Give Bill a holler. He'll hook you up with all your trapping needs down there. Got box traps, leg hold traps, stretchers. Give Bill a holler down there. They'll fix you up www.duketraps.com well buddy turkey season is coming up now most people don't think it's already started dude well not here in pennsylvania in florida most people Georgia. don't think about scent control no they don't who would you call if you're looking for scent control to bring that gobbler in <laughs> the feller named dear p dave give him a holler down there rd1 he'll hook you up with Mouth calls, box calls, slate calls. He also owns Apparition Scent, which we live by during the fall and the spring. We use Phantom Hunter. I didn't have a brain fart tonight. See that? Got soap and spray. Use that so them old skillet head does don't pick you out in the morning when you're out there turkey hunting and start blowing out your areas. So give them a holler. 100% lethal or Apparition Scent. And we got Chico Outdoors. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram. It is a nonprofit organization dedicated to getting the youth involved in the outdoors. Hey, did you see them cooking the other day? I did not. They let Matt use a knife. I, what in the hell is wrong with the hunt chef to let Matt use a knife? Hey, better and, that Matt and Justin, than this Matt. Justin was standing there with a fork trying to mix stuff. Who mixes stuff with a fork? I don't know. You know what? If you want to come up there and say, what were you doing on the Hunt Chef? You can do that April 15th and 16th at the Westmoreland Fairgrounds for the annual Outdoor Expo. Chico Outdoors is in memory of Andrew Chico Christ. Unfortunately passed away, but they're keeping his memory going by giving back to the community. So stop up at the Westmoreland Fairgrounds April 15th and 16th. There is a ton of stuff coming on that weekend. Follow them, Chico Outdoors, on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, you know, half of this podcast, when you watch this on YouTube, I was uh, looking at trail camera pictures and... Even showed me a couple. Fur, fur, fur prices and... But one of our good sponsors and some of the best damn cameras you're going to buy, Bow Creek Outdoor Products. Give these guys a holler. They got three different cameras. One shoots 4K video, the other one video with sound. Then you got the cell cam. These things are phenomenal. I was showing Matt tonight. We had a deer on a power line with deer behind it at a couple hundred yards. And I mean, you could see these deer clear as day. So give these guys a holler. Bow Creek Outdoor Products. Veteran owned PA based company. Check them out. And they work on all three platforms. If you've got the wireless camera, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. So check them out. Let them know the boys from the Keystone Experience sent you. And Rob, the weather turned a little bit today. I left my Harley at home. Yeah, I didn't take mine out today. I don't blame you. But it's that time of year. Service. If you're looking for a new bike, you've got to stop up at Z&M Harley Davidson here in Greensburg. They're actually running a deal right now on some tires, so... If I wouldn't have just bought a brand new bike, I would probably take that deal because I go through tires. Oh, yeah. So do I. But Z&M, stop up there. Tons of activities going on. Got the reason to ride going on. It's the 55th year anniversary of Z&M Harley-Davidson. The 120th anniversary of Harley-Davidson altogether. Yep. New, used, stop up, talk to anybody on the sales team, Kelton, Ryan, the rest of the crew. Check out Joel and them guys over in the parts department. Tori and then ladies over there in the clothing. Go back in the back and see, uh, geez, why can't I think of his name? I don't know, but I'm going to be taking my bike back there to the service department. So go back there. They'll get you fixed up if you're ready to go. Get you ready for the spring here. ZNMHarleyDavidson.com. Check it out. 
Well, buddy, that's going to wrap this one up. Follow along. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Outdoor Call Radio app. Download it if you're looking for 24-7, 365 outdoor content. Mm -hmm. So take us out here, buddy. We're going to wrap this one up. Hey, shoot straight and keep the dirty side down.